and welcome to another episode of my F123 My Team Career My Dear Today for Part 18 for the Australian Grand Prix. Coming into this race we had a very strong Bahrain, but we are still being troubled with reliability. Okay, we seem to be having a few software issues at the moment. Sit tight for a few minutes while we reboot some things, okay? So we finally managed to get out on track then, and I feel like we haven't had a clean weekend since last season all the way back in Qatar before, since we've had no gearbox issues, no nothing in qualifying and the changes to the reliability seem to have hurt us over the winter a bit but we are quicker overall when you look at Bahrain so the first lap wasn't particularly good but we've gone purple in the first sector this is on the same set of tyres and then we've found our personal best in the middle sector we have found just under half a second which will put us onto provisional pole position for the race and now coming in towards the final lap in qualifying we're down in the first sector we found a little bit more time in the middle sector and we will start the race on pole Welcome to magnificent Melbourne in the Australian sun. This is a fantastic city and it's a fantastic and slightly revised racetrack. We're in the great state of Victoria, now 14 corners and 3.28 miles for the drivers to navigate, five to the left and nine to the right with three whole DRS zones. The track has been remodeled to encourage more taking let's hope we get loads of it today it's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race brown lines up on pole position and yuki sonoda completes the front row looking down the rest of the grid we have Sainz, russell perez hamilton verstappen ocon norris gasly fernando alonso leclerc magnuson joe Stroll, Bottas, Albert, Oscar Piastri, Fittipaldi, De Vries, Sergeant, and Liam Lawson. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. And it is great to be joined once again in the commentary box by Natalie Pinkham. Nat, how has the sport changed in your time working? Let's talk about Brown. What a quality performance. The big question, though, is how does that translate on race day? Can they hold on to that lead? And let's see who's able to keep their tyres in that temperature sweet spot early on. You've got a great tyre warmer underneath your right foot. And the drivers need to make the most of that on the formation lap. Or they'll skate wide at turn one on cold rubber. So we're here on the grid then. And it's a pretty easy one stop. Starting on the softs, going to the mediums. No rain expected. It's a lovely sunny day here in Australia and let's see what we can do alongside George at the start. We had a very, very fast car in Bahrain. Here in Albert Park, very different track. Okay, so if it works there, here, sure we, we may have a chance this season with some better results. But here we go then, the five foot lights, come on. And it's lights out and away we go for the Australian Grand Prix. We've locked out the front row, but it's not going to last long. As you has got a bad start. And George, he's already passed him. Now, we head down the second straight towards turn four. George goes to our inside. He's got a rocket of a launch off the last corner. We have to hold it round the outside. We've gone to cut him back. And Yuki Sonoda has tapped us round. The, our teammate collides. Our first bit of contact with Luke, with Yuki Sonoda in a Grand Prix. It's only taken two races and it's all gone wrong already. So this is a replay of what happened then. We tried to do the switch back on George and try and get back up his inside, which on the first lap was always risky. Yuki saw the gap though, went for it, tapped us round. He's probably got front wing damage. This is what it looked like from 
George's point of view, you can see this, he's tapped us round. In no way is that Sonoda's fault, it's totally my fault. I'll take the blame for that. But it's just very frustrating as we really struggle to find some grip. These tyres are cooking after that spin. But it is my fault, I will admit that. As pulling off is Pierre Gasly just a couple of laps into the race, lap two. So, all we can do now is get our way back through and see how high up we can get. And that's going to start with a move on Lando up the inside. Good move. Next up is Logan Sargent in the Williams. We need to dispatch these slower ones as quickly as possible. And we do with the American driver. So, as we come into the final corner, up next is the two Alpha Tauris who were just battling a little bit. And now, as we trundle down the pit lane, it is our former teammate Enzo Fittipaldi who's first on our list. And we tick him off. And next up is his teammate of Liam Lawson. But Enzo is going to come back at us, but he thought better of that. Probably a bit of saltiness there as we did drop him coming out of last season. One lap later though, on to lap 5, we're on the back of Liam Lawson in what's pretty much the home Grand Prix for him as we send it late up the inside, catch him napping and next up is the heart of Nick De Vries. He was sacked from Alpha Tauri and is holding up the two behind. We get De Vries though into turn 4, he tries to cut us back, we hold it to the inside and we do get the position and we are slowly slowing get, getting our way up there this though this is Yuki at the front on lap 9 lap 8 boxing and he started on the hard tyres what are we doing at Lamborghini he's going on to the mediums I don't understand what are you doing he could have done, done such a good one stop and we forced him into a two. And he was at the chance of a win potentially. George was getting away though. And we've brought him out into so much traffic. And now this is Bottas and Albon having a battle right in front of us. Bottas has a big lock up. And now we are all over the back of the tyre driver trying to find a way through. Maybe we can get both of them there. We fade to the left. Go to the inside. We dive bomb down the inside. We get Albon. Bottas is fighting us back though. We force him round the outside and we get the move done. Now can we get away? Then head towards Bottas' teammate Joe. But these soft tyres were starting to cook a little bit. As Bottas on these mediums goes back round our outside. These softs have switched off. And Bottas re us. But we're going to send it late back on the inside. And catch him napping as he goes over to take the racing line. We need to break DRS here. If we can, we could potentially be gone. And head up towards Joe, the other Alfa Romeo. This is Sinoda now. Just about getting his way back through. He's got to put a stint in on those medium tyres now. Otherwise, it's game over for us today. We've got, we've got a quick car. But strategy calls like this isn't helping as we box now at the end of lap 12 and into the pits we will go onto the medium tyres for our one and only stop of the day hopefully we can do an undercut on Bottas and Albon and try and gain some time on them before they box they're going to be going a couple extra laps being on the mediums so hopefully on these medium tyres we can push a little bit and get the gap up because we are struggling on these softs to get away and we come out though at the back in 18th so now back up front this is Sonoda he's got his way through Albon and now he's on the way to try and get past Bottas he goes to the outside Bottas defends the inside line but Yuki wanna move has the grip to, to keep it pinned around the outside now this is us heading down the pit straight on lap 15 we have beat out Bottas by a country mile then because there is Bottas coming out of the first corner. He's gone horribly wrong 
And whilst I was doing the camera angles, I've realised that there's been a glitch here and Nick De Vries doesn't have a helmet. Now this carries on for the next couple of races. At the time recording this video, Codemasters have just released a patch to fix this. So Nick De Vries for now will not have a helmet. So now this, as we skip on all the way to lap 24, we were slowly eating away at Esteban Ocon for the final point. We didn't really have the pace as I was hoping for early on. But Sonoda, who's boxed again for the two stop, very questionable, has overtaken us there and is trying to get past Ocon now as we've been failing to do because we just haven't been able to get close enough. But Yuki is slow at the corner and I want this first this point as well as Yuki does and I don't really know why we are fighting this he's got the much quicker tyres and ultimately with so little laps to go we're only realistically getting a point out of this race now as Ocon does try to get away now and Sedona goes back up our inside but we keep it around the outside as now we head through the quick chicane made even quicker by a DRS we go wide Sonoda though is back through we have a look at the inside and it's job done for Sonoda there we have a little wobble these mediums are starting to switch off as now Sonoda on the back of Esteban Ocon meanwhile um, Oscar Piastri has retired from his home Grand Prix as round the outside goes Sonoda on Ocon for the final point P9 two points up for grabs there he has got it Sonoda though now has absolutely flown away two laps to go now we are finally close enough to have a go at Ocon he's trying to get one point at least for Alpine after Gas is DNF in the opening laps. We fake him. We tried it late. Ocon has been forced into a mistake as we just filled his mirrors with our car. Skipping on now to lap 29, the final lap of the Grand Prix. We could have pressured this man and maybe make it back to back wins. The race didn't play out as we had hoped. And George Russell wins. The Grand Prix is a Mercedes 1-2 here in Australia. Carlos Sainz is going to fill out in the final spot on the podium, followed by his teammates and the two Red Bulls. We managed to fend off Ocon after getting it ahead, and we are going to come home for after a gl glorious Bahrain. It's a horrible Australia. Another Grand Prix and a fantastic win for Mercedes. Natalie, fill us in. What was it that helped the team achieve their success today? I feel consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalise on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. And I can see the drivers starting to approach the podium for the victory celebrations. A real team victory today. Everyone played their part. Congratulations then to Mercedes, your race winners today. So that's been your Australian Grand Prix for round two of the season. Very frustrating race for us. I thought we'd have more pace than we did after the spin. And Yuki, I don't know what we were doing with Yuki Sonoda's strategy there. He started on the hards. He had the opportunity to just go long, put on the softs at the end and be rapid and maybe be in the shout for a podium. I don't think he would have won. But as it stands, after our win in Bahrain, we come into Australia and we only get a point. And 
is P11 for us. Down at the back, as I mentioned, Gasly retired, so did Piastri. In terms of the championship then, we've dropped from the lead down to third. It's now a Mercedes 1-2 in terms of the championship. George Russell leading by 11 points. We are now 19 points back. And it's also a British 1-2-3 in the driver's standings as well. Red Bull not really turning up so far this season after their strong testing. So we've dropped from second to third in the constructors. Mercedes still lead the constructors Ferrari jumpers to P2. And there's still many, many teams who after two rounds still haven't got a point to their name. I hope you enjoyed this video. A bit of a frustrating one for me. It could have been so, so much more this race we're still learning this car and by a lot of things we didn't have that much pace to challenge those ahead we still have a lot to find out though about our car we go to monaco next a totally different track but we'll take it race by race it's only round two i hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you in the next one goodbye